Today we're looking at winemaking processes and one in particular, that's malolactic fermentation. Hello and welcome to The Great Explorer where we celebrate the world of wine. On this channel we do wine education, product reviews and lots of tastings, so if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Now malolactic fermentation, or MLF as I will refer to it from now on, is a particularly popular process in winemaking. It usually occurs in most reds, it certainly occurs in lots of sparkling wines, and it occurs in white wines, things like Chardonnay and Viognier as well. In its simplest description, it's the conversion of harsh malic acids to softer lactic acids. So there's no actual fermentation that's taking place, albeit a little bit of carbon dioxide is produced by the process. It's actually more of a, a malolactic conversion. So why do it? Well, the primary role in MLF is to de-acidify the wine. You know, in certain regions, the berries on the vine are particularly high in acid where we get cooler regions and too many harsh acids in the wine are going to make that wine feel particularly unpleasant. By lowering the acids in the wine, we're also creating a more stable wine. And finally, it can also add some sensory elements to the wine as well, so you get things like a slightly richer mouthfeel. You may get some different aromas coming through the wine, particularly in the case of something like Chardonnay, you can start to get apple aromas, buttery aromas as well. So like I say, MLF, uh, is the process of converting a harsh malic acid to a softer lactic acid. And this is done by, of course, introducing the lactic acid bacteria to the wine during the winemaking process. So it aids the wine by making it more microbiologically stable as that lactic acid bacteria feeds on some of the elements in the wine during the conversion. And once this has been done, like I say, there are several descriptors that may indicate that a wine has undergone MLF. That wine is going to start to feel a little bit softer, a little bit rounder. And that change in the mouthfeel is due to the pH levels in the wine changing as we undergo the MLF process. And also an increase in ethyl laxitate as well in the wine is going to increase that mouthfeel. So I talked a little bit about some of the aromas you might see in a wine. It's always a little difficult to be able to call out in full. Um, we're expecting to see a little bit more complexity on things like white wine. With Chardonnay you might get things like, uh, like I say, buttery aromas, hazelnut aromas perhaps as well. And sometimes you even get things like dried fruit and baked bread also. However, some would suggest that undergoing MLF, particularly in some of the red wines, can actually create uh, the loss of some of those primary fruit characteristics and it focuses more on the secondary characteristics. An example of this would be Pinot Noir where a lot of people say that going through MLF reduces some of those raspberry, cranberry, cherry type notes and starts to introduce a much more savoury farmyard type of aroma. There are of course some wine styles where malolactic fermentation is not required particularly for things like light, fruitier wines, or low acid wines from warmer climate locations. And there are several steps that you can take to prevent MLF from occurring during the winemaking process. Limited maceration of the berries and early pressing uh, is a good way to do that, as well as maintaining things like the pH level of the wine and the sulfur levels in the wine as well. Also keeping the wine cool uh, at particular cool temperatures during fermentation and undertaking extensive filtering is going to help to create a style of wine that hasn't undergone MLF. And if we're going to be really chemical about it, you can use inhibitors in the wine as well to prevent that process taking place. Though, of course, the more chemicals we're starting to add to our wine, the less natural, in my view, it becomes. So what about faults in wine as a result of malolactic fermentation? Well, it all comes down to the type of grapes, the type of berries that we're actually making that wine with. The most common wine fault is an occurrence of MLF taking place when it wasn't desired at all in the first place. You know, wines like Chenin Blanc and Riesling, if they went, underwent MLF, would be particularly unpleasant. The outcome of this fermentation happening in bottle can be a gassy or hazy type of wine, so something that's easily distinguishable uh, to the eye as a fault. So malolactic fermentation really does need to be an agreed process by the winemaker prior to any activity uh, in the wine production line. So what's my view on malolactic fermentation? Well, clearly there are some wine styles that call for it. Uh, my only concern would be, you know, through some of the uh, examples I've given there, is that in some cases, there's a lot of chemical activity going on in the wines. And for me, that suggests almost a slightly genetically modified approach to winemaking. 
Uh, where it calls for it, I absolutely fully understand it. And if a winemaker is going for that particular style, um, then that's fully understandable. However, it is a bit of a slippery slope to say whether it's the right thing to do or not. Uh, if the grape doesn't call for it, it feels to me like it's been modified um, perhaps unnecessarily. Where it's not necessarily called for, I would probably try to go for something a bit more of a natural style associated with that grape. That's not to say, of course, that I don't enjoy wines that have been subject to MLF. With most red wines going through it, it's hard to avoid. But it is interesting to try uh, versions of Chardonnay that have undergone MLF and haven't to get that comparison of the flavours. Again, flavour, taste, aroma is a very personal thing. You will find a style that you like yourself. Overall though, I fully understand why it's used in the vineyard to create different styles. And you know, for me, winemakers have to be applauded for going out and trying different styles, particularly where it's needed in certain scenarios. I certainly wouldn't want a wine of mine to have been subject to too much malic acid. And I think that's where MLF does a great job. So there we go, that's malolactic fermentation. I hope this has been useful to you. Let me know in the comments section below if there are any winemaking procedures that you're looking to learn a little bit more about. I'm the Grape Explorer, I look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers.